And so the big mindset shift for me was moving from a hunting every month, sell as much as possible mindset to more of a farming mindset, which was let's acquire customers and then do everything we can to serve them well so that the next month they are excited about working with you. And it's a slower growth way of building a business, but it's way more consistent. You're listening to the e-commerce influence podcast with Austin Bronner and Andrew Foxwell. If you want honest, transparent, and tangible results that deliver lasting value and revenue, this is your podcast. It's safe to say that most of us have been doing a lot more shopping online lately. And if you're an e-commerce brand, that means you might be seeing more first time customers. Once they've made that first purchase, how do you keep them coming back? That's what Klaviyo is for. Klaviyo is the ultimate marketing platform for e-commerce brands. Klaviyo gives you the tools to build your contact list, to send memorable emails, automate those key messages, and more. A lot more. That's why more than 40,000 e-commerce brands like Chubby's, 8sleep, and Living Proof, including most of my clients, use Klaviyo to build a loyal following. Strong customer relationships mean more repeat sales, enthusiastic word of mouth, and less depending on expensive third-party ads. Whether you're launching a new business or taking your brand to the next level, Klaviyo can help you get growing faster. Plus, it's free to get started. Just visit klaviyo.com slash influence to create your free account today. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash influence. You may know Just Uno for pop-ups, but if you haven't checked them out recently, they're a full-blown conversion rate optimization platform. Yes, they've got pop-ups, but also they've got AI product recommendations, exit offers, a Facebook Messenger, SMS, Capture, and a lot more. Brands like Pure Vita Bracelets, Rothy's, and Movement use Just Uno to capture and nurture their traffic all the way to conversion. I recommend Just Uno to my clients as a top conversion rate optimization tool. Now, you can use AI cross-sells and upsells directly in page or in cart with Just Uno Plus for higher average order value. Just Uno Commerce AI takes in your product catalog and then will display smart recommendations based on visitor behavior. If you want to create a seamless experience from offsite all the way to onsite with unified messaging, you got to check out Just Uno. Head over to justuno.com slash influence to learn more. That's J-U-S-T-U-N-O dot com slash influence. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the e-commerce influence podcast. My name is Austin Bronner, and I'm here with my lovely wife, Carly Johnson Bronner. Hey, everyone. And we're excited to bring you an episode today that's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be an episode uh, that we've been thinking about doing for a while, but have never kind of, I don't know, sat down and, uh, and, and made it happen. We turned our office into a studio and we wanted to sit down and do a little interview. Carly's going to be interviewing me. Uh, she recently launched her own podcast called the Doing It Different Podcast. And it's been, go, it's been super fun to work on together. And so we thought, you know what, let's just sit down and do an interview together. And she's going to interview me a little bit about my journey and how I got here to be hosting the e-commerce influence podcast. Yeah. And how you got to where you are now in terms of your business, not just podcast. I think that's yes. the most important thing we'll be talking about. And I have to tell people that we actually have recorded this episode before <laughs> we recorded a full episode. It was epic. And then it somehow got deleted. Somehow got deleted. Yes. A hundred percent. I can't remember exactly what happened, but um, I was trying to like clear an SD card and I accidentally cleared it and it was devastating, but we're coming back with this episode. And yeah, and, and that's the whole reason we decided to do this episode is because I think that for, if you're on your journey, your entrepreneurial journey, and you're either towards the beginning or, uh, you know, just, just in it, it's really easy to look at the, from the outside and see kind of where people are at and not have any perspective on how they got there. And, uh, and how many maybe years or how long they've been working in a certain direction to be where they're at. And so our goal on this episode is to kind of 
I don't know, pull back the curtain a little bit and talk about what the journey has looked like for me. And um, hopefully it resonates with some of you guys who are on your own journey. Yeah. And I will say one of the points or one of the points in time recently that inspired us to record this episode is someone close to us recently said, oh my gosh, Austin, I just wish I could have your business. Yet he has started his business six to eight months ago. And just like Austin said, we want to share where Austin was in his first six to eight months and where he's been over the last, what, seven years now, eight years? Yeah, about that, about that. Where he's been over that time frame to get where he is now. So Aust, will you let us know a little bit about where and when your journey with entrepreneurship started? Sure. So my, my journey uh, into the entrepreneurial world started really after college. I think there was no, you hear a lot of, a lot of people that are like, I started a business in my dorm room. Uh, and it was something that I knew, or I was like fast tracking college and starting a business on the side. That was definitely not me. I was very much on the track, a different track. I I was kind of thought that finance was something that was interesting to me. Um, after college, I moved, I got a Fulbright scholarship and I moved to Macau, China. And in Macau, when I was there, my, it was my whole idea was that I was going to be go, go into finance in Hong Kong. That was my, my idea of what I thought my life was going to be like. When I was over there, I went to this really interesting conference called Make a Difference Asia. And when I was over there, this, this conference, there was a, a debate going on between uh, Tony Shea of Zappos and a professor at the London School of Economics. And the debate was whether or not you should start a business or go to business school. And I remember watching this debate and I really didn't even really know what entrepreneurship was or like what being an entrepreneur as a, as a uh, career was at the time. It was kind of my first intro into that mindset. And I remember listening to Tony Shea and my mind being blown and being like, there is absolutely no way that I'm going to go to business school anymore after listening to Tony Shea talk about how you can take that money, invest it, build a business. And even if you fail, you're still going to learn more than if you go to business school. So that was a light bulb moment for me. And I was 22, I think at that, at that point, I came back, moved to Los Angeles, got a job at a startup. When I say a startup, it really was super small. I think I was the second or third employee. And we all worked remotely and we were selling healthy vending machine franchises uh, around the country. The company is called Human Healthy Vending and now it's called Snack Nation. But it was really my first deep dive into what it means to be an entrepreneur. And it was an incredibly powerful experience for me because we were just trying to figure it out, hiring people, growing. And I learned so much first thing. And I also met you when I was when I was working there. Yes, that is when we met. You were, I think, 24 and I was 22 at that time. And you guys were hustling. I mean, you were up at 6 a.m. on East Coast sales time and you were leaving the office at 9, 10, but it was a really good crew. And even though that job or your time there wasn't perfect, you learned so much. And I really do think it set the foundation for you moving forward as an entrepreneur. 100%. I learned so much during that time. I was uh, pushed to my like edge of ability. Uh, we, we grew so quickly that, you know, I was hiring at one point, I think I hired 20 some people that were on my sales team. Um, and during that process, I just learned so much about hiring, about managing, about sales, about marketing. Uh, and it was every single day pushing past my comfort zone. And that, I think during that two and a half years, I learned so much about what I liked about business and also what I didn't like about business. And that kind of helped formulate my ideas going forward about what I wanted my life to look like and what I wanted my business to look like. Yeah. And I think it's a really good point or your experience shares a point that is, if you know you want to be an entrepreneur, you can work with other entrepreneurs in the beginning or in the middle of your journey to learn more, to soak up their knowledge. I think that for you was crucial. It really was. Even though I had this light bulb moment of like, I want to start a business at some point in my life, 
I wasn't ready to dive in because I had zero skills around business, right? And it's, you know, you graduate from college and you don't really have a skill set. What you learn in college generally doesn't transfer very well. And I had to get a little bit of an idea of what it's like to actually operate in a startup. And that's what, I, that's what those first couple of years were like. So you ended up leaving human. What happened then? Yeah. So about two and a half years later, two, two and a half years later, I felt like I had a vision for what I wanted and it wasn't what I was doing. And I didn't really know exactly what that was going to be, but I knew it wasn't what I was doing currently. And so I left and it happened to coincide with the fact that you were in the Peace Corps and you were living in Namibia and I wanted to go visit you and we were trying to make our relationship work. And so I left, I uh, went to Thailand for about a month and I went to a Muay Thai boxing camp, which was really incredible, an incredible experience. And it was kind of a transition out of uh, this period in my life where I was working so hard. Like you mentioned, I was like, I was kind of burned out. I was just working so many hours and I left, then I went and I flew to Namibia and I lived with you for a couple of months, had an incredible time in Africa and I came back and I said, all right, now I need to figure out what to do. I mentioned earlier that one of the things that I was so fascinated by and was just lit up by when I was working at Human was marketing automation. The idea that you can create things that work for you while you're not working. It has always fascinated me. At the time, we were creating marketing emails that could go out to people anywhere in the world automatically and deliver a message, a sales message to them. We built some crazy ones at Human. We had, I think we, at the point when I left, we were doing about maybe 15 to $20 million in sales. And we had one salesperson. Uh, And that was all because of automated email. We could drive people through there. So I, I went out and I left and I thought to myself, I had a couple of friends who were doing e-commerce businesses and I noticed that they weren't at the time doing any email marketing, not triggered email marketing like I was talking about. So I thought if I could do it for our franchise, which is selling a hundred thousand dollar franchises, then I could definitely do it for a company that is selling 25 or $30 sunglasses. And so that was my first client was Blender's Eyewear. Uh, my friend Blake he was a co-founder and I literally moved to San Diego And I was living on his floor and we would go work all day, create marketing automation in their business, try to help them grow and worked really well. Did that for about a month with him, just living in San Diego on their floors. They were super early as a startup and that transitioned to getting a second client, right? Because they were living right, they were working right next door to Pure Vita bracelets and I was able to talk to them. They saw what I was doing. They hired me and that was my second client. So Blenders and Pure Vita were my first two clients and I was doing marketing automation, basically installing emails, getting super excited about it and diving into marketing. And that kind of kicked off my business and my consulting business. And around that time, I think I kicked off the e-commerce influence podcast within, within about a year, uh, I went to traffic and conversion summit with a former business partner and we watched a presentation about podcasting and said, you know what, we can do this. Let's make this happen. We launched a podcast and that was, oh my gosh, almost four or five years ago, something like that and kicked that off. And that really can solidified my dive into the e-commerce world. Yeah. I remember when you guys first started that podcast, it was super small, just a few downloads here and there, a couple hundred downloads. And now you guys are huge. This podcast is really, really big. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just grown over time you know, gotten better and better and better. And we've brought in new guests and new hosts, new hosts. Uh, it's, you know, it's been a evolving journey and it's, it's one of those journeys that, you know, if you just keep stacking kind of rocks over and over again, eventually it gets, you have a really solid foundation. Yeah. So back to your story, you and a business partner basically started an agency Yeah. Uh, and it later ended. Can you tell us briefly about why you guys decided to start an agency and also why you learned an agency was not what you wanted to be doing. Yeah. So I think it's a really, really valuable thing for anybody who is an entrepreneur, especially early on. You don't know what you don't know. 
And that kind of happened to me. We had some really good success early on working with clients. And what happened was that led to more success and more people wanting to hire, hire me. And I got to the point where I was like, oh, I'm going to have to start turning down business here or I'm going to have to start hiring people. So I partnered uh, with, a, with a business partner and we said, all right, we're going to continue to go with this and we're going to start hiring people, build an agency and do this work at a larger scale. But I kind of backed into it. I didn't really, it wasn't deliberate about this, this thought process. It was kind of an idea that we were just seizing an opportunity versus choosing what we wanted very quickly as this thing started to grow we realized it wasn't the business model that we wanted and we were fighting it and we were having success and it was growing, but we didn't want it to be the way that it was because it was so employee intensive. It was so frankly stressful, right? Like the idea of doing growth for e-commerce businesses, it's hard enough to do it for one business, let alone do it for 15, 20 clients and you know, they're all fast growing businesses. You're like really in the weeds every single day and you have a, you're a huge part of their success. So it can be very, very stressful. We realized it wasn't really the right thing for us and we didn't know what to do because it was continuing to grow and it was what people wanted. And that led to a really, really, really challenging time in my life where uh, I knew I was doing something that I didn't really want to do. And my business partner was in the same boat as well. Uh, you know, we had different vision for where it was going, but didn't know how to get there. Ultimately, that was a big part of the kind of breakup of the agency was not having that strong, clear vision. You know, if I was if at the beginning, I said I wanted to build an agency. I think we could have done it. But since we didn't want that and we were doing it anyway, that led to a lot of friction. And it was a huge learning experience for me that you really have to know you really have to de desire what you were doing because it can grow really fast and it can continue down a direction that you might not actually, it, like if you're starting and you don't want what you're building, it's not going to change. So what I'm hearing is that the money was there, the clients were there and that was great. And you guys were chasing after that. However, the lifestyle, the responsibility, the number of employees you were responsible for and the stress that came with having an agency is not what you actually wanted. Yes, there was that, that was a combination. I think also the, the, the money, the way that it was structured, the business model was a, extra challenging, right? I didn't have early on when you don't have an accounting background or don't have an understanding of how cash flow works in business it can be really challenging to run a business that has low margins, right? The more margin your business has, the more safety it has. And when it's a relatively low margin business, it's very human resources intensive. That can be additionally challenging. And you're kind of running on these razors, razors and margins, always trying to sell, sell, sell and grow. That makes it much, much harder. And that's what was happening. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't have a great understanding of finances at that point. That was a huge pain point for me. Uh, and we're talking huge pain point. I remember being in New York City visiting friends and Austin literally broke out in a full body head to toe rash. Oh, yeah. So stressed out. So out of his element. I mean, this was like he said, it was a really low time in his life, in our life, just because of the chaos. My health completely deteriorated because I, yeah, I was letting that letting the stress uh, get to me. I didn't have any like. You know, I was being pulled in two different directions and that was incredibly stressful. So let's take a quick break from the story here. You and that business partner ended up breaking up, yep. which was a really positive thing long term. And we won't get into the details there, but I would like you to give a few pieces of advice for people who are looking to partner with other business owners who are looking for partnership or have been proposed a partnership. What are a few things you'd tell people in that situation? Sure. I look back at almost every challenge that I've faced in business is a really, really good learning opportunity because when you learn it early, then you don't make the same mistake over again. And I think that the most important thing with a, with a business partnership is to make sure that you're truly aligned with a long-term vision. 
I think this is the exact same in all relationships, especially with your relationship with your partner and a, a business, a business relationship, business partnership, and a relationship with your partner. They're very, very similar. There's so intense and you have to be so aligned. And I look at our relationship and one of the things that keeps us together is that we, while we come from very different angles and we have different viewpoints and different things, our long-term vision is identical and it keeps us moving forward. And that I think is the most important thing with the business partnership. Do you know the person enough that your long-term vision is identical and it's so close because it's great to have separate skill sets and that's so powerful in a business partnership, but you got to be long-term aligned. Yeah. And I would say things that you've done moving forward has been to experiment with different partners and to do short-term projects with people before committing to the big lifelong or year-long partnership. Oh, and when you say year-long, you got to expect whatever you're doing, it's going to take longer than you expect. Whatever business you're building is going to take longer than you expect it to take. So you had just dissolved the agency and split up with your business partner. That's where we are in this story now. What comes next? So that was an incredibly challenging period. Like I mentioned, uh, my health was deteriorating. I had to go and lay off uh, employees. And I remember flying to San Francisco to meet up with one of my employees. Who, Ian, who's Ian, awesome. Who is absolutely incredible and sharing. It was one of the worst conversations, sharing just the bad news. From that, one of the things that was really that I did was that I am, am proud of looking back on is try to help everybody get a job. And went out of my way to connect people with other people to help them get a job. And so I was able to leave that feeling good about myself. And your whole team did get a job. My whole team did. Yeah. Um, And, you know, that was that was my biggest priority through that was making sure they got that they left in as equal or better place. And that point, you know, that was a I really didn't know what I wanted to do at that point. I knew there were things that I really liked. And I knew there were things I didn't like, but I couldn't kind of square together what that was going to look like going forward. So in the meantime, I was doing consulting work. I ended up working with a friend as the CMO of a company um, called Boom Boom for, I don't know, it was maybe six months, something like that. They're crushing it. Yeah, they're, do- they're doing really, really well uh, now. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool business. and. It was, it was a good time for me to kind of figure out what I wanted to continue moving forward with. We did some travel. Uh, we lived in Asia for a while and we got married. We did some travel. We got married. Yes. It was awesome. And we, yeah, that was kind of a, we we moved from New York to Austin, Texas during that time. And yeah, it was, it was definitely a transition point. This was about five years ago, right? Four, four and five Five years ago this fall. And so was trying to figure things out during that process, went to a mastermind in Alabama with some of my good friends who I'm still friends with now. And, you know, one of the, one of the people had this idea of doing the work that I would, was doing for our agency in a workshop format where I would basically take two to three days and help people implement automated marketing and build a more profitable business by using automated marketing in a very like small, intense environment where we map things out, build them and people can leave with a better business. And that was super appealing to me. And that was my light bulb went off and I was like, this seems like the thing I want to do. And I always have loved teaching and coaching and it just seemed like a perfect fit for me. So I got, I went all in and I was so excited. I partnered with my friend Drew Sanaki and we hosted our first email intensive in San Diego about four years ago. And it was a huge success. It was really, really fun. And we, we had a bunch of people that came in, we rebuilt email marketing sequences. We dove into lifecycle marketing and it was freaking awesome. And I loved it. Okay. So obviously at this point right now, you aren't doing events all full time. No. So you have a transition from when you first threw that event, that small intensive to now where you're more a membership based site. What happened between uh, that point and now? 
Well, it's funny because, you know, I went all in and I thought this was like the perfect business model for me. And I really, really enjoyed doing the events. One thing that I realized, though, was that doing these events over and over and over again, you need to be constantly launching things, constantly selling tickets, constantly hosting events. And you need to put down a bunch of money to reserve all these hotels. And then you put all your money down. It's, it's highly cyclical. And after doing these events for about a year, when I, that's really all I was doing was just hosting these workshops, I started to get burned out. I needed some sort of a model that was going to help me keep myself out of the launch mode all the time. And I remember sitting, laying down at Barton Springs about a year after I'd started doing these events and we had an event upcoming and I was just so tired. You know, I definitely at that point in my life was still very much in the like kind of crush it culture of work super, super, super hard, you know, taking pride in how many hours that I worked and waking up super early and crushing coffee. Yes, exactly. And I look back at that and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy that I'm, I progressed out of that because, uh, it was burning me out. And I think that that, that type of a lifestyle can help you through short periods of time when you need to get things done and moving forward, but it's not sustainable. It wasn't sustainable for me. And I, I recognized I had to make a change. I like doing the events, but it couldn't be my only business. And I remember I went down to Argentina with a friend who was living down there and we were talking about just like what to do because I was burned out of the events. I needed something that was more consistent and I was frustrated because we had all this progress that was being made in these events and then you wouldn't hear from, you wouldn't be in touch with the same clients. And so I started working with a business coach. And one of the, the reasons that I did that is I wanted to build something that was like a membership site for my clients that I could host some of these trainings and create a community where people could help each other out and I could work with them on an ongoing basis versus just in the events. So I went down there, had a great time, had some good conversations and came back and said, you know what, I'm going to build something. And, and if I can interject here. When I talked to you about the conversations you were having with one of your best friends, McGee in Argentina, you told me at one point you were like, I'm just, I'm about ready to walk away. I'm yeah. about ready to leave this whole entrepreneurship thing behind. I'm, I'm constantly not entrepreneurship. Out. Okay. So what, tell us about like that rock bottom there. It wasn't that I was ready to, to, to leave being an entrepreneur. I was, I was considering, uh, leaving where I was um, in, e- in e-commerce, uh, in the event space, um, considering trying something new. I think that the events were so fulfilling while I was doing the event, but so draining when I was outside of the event. And most of the time it was outside of the event, right? The sales process was draining. The sales process was super draining. And so I was, I was thinking to myself, I got to, I need to take some time off and refigure out a new business for myself. Maybe go into something a bit different. I think at the time I was thinking about cryptocurrency. It was like blowing up. And uh, yeah, and it was, it was something I truly considered. I definitely wasn't tired of entrepreneurship. It was really just what I had built. My bad. Didn't mean to say that. No, no, no. <laughs> but I, I think that, I think it's interesting because I think that's one of the reasons why I've been able to stick things out through challenges is that you really, 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 really have to want to be an entrepreneur to want to, to continue through the challenges that you face every single month. Yes. I know whenever my mom thinks about your business, she always is like, or your journey, she's always like, I couldn't do it. Austin never quits. He's constantly reinventing himself. He's constantly reinventing his business because a couple of years and a couple of years go by again, and you are doing something different and doing something new. And a lot of people would have just walked away. So that's really cool. And I honor you for that. I want to get back to your story, which is that you started working with a business coach who was helping you build a membership site. So you could bring a lot of your clients together in one place and build a community with them where you could teach them things and not constantly have to be in the sales process. So tell us more about that. Yes. So started working with James Shramko, who is a 
great business coach uh, for people in my space, like looking to build a membership site. We made a decision to build and launch a membership site in a month, which looking back on is absolutely crazy, but we did it. We started and we launched it one month later and it was at the time called Brand Growth Experts Membership. It's now what you guys know as the coalition. And we launched and we said, you know what, we're going to put in our best content and we're going to work hard every single month to create a, an environment where people can share, create, help people one-on-one. So created a private coaching area where one-on-one I could help people out and help them with their email, help them with growing their business, help them with connections, uh, anything that I can help share with people and also host live trainings. And so we launched, it was still very small. I think we added 70 people right away, uh, which I was so excited about. And it was like, let's go. Like this is the, this is the new model. I was still doing a lot of workshops, private workshops, and also doing my, my intensive workshops. Um, in the meantime, while I was building this and for, it was, you know, people often talk about like something that you maybe feel like was immediate success. I was excited about it because we added about 70 members, but it definitely was still such a small part of our revenue that it was very hard to get really excited about it because I could see the future, but I knew it was going to take years to get things rolling. Yeah. And I feel like you're at a place now where your membership site has grown and is probably one of your biggest priorities in terms of your business. And you occasionally are doing different private coaching groups with individual clients and with businesses. Yes. And then what, what are your other, basically what I'm trying to get at here is you have your membership site. What other sources of revenue do you have in your business right now? So there's, there's two main things and I'll go through these and then go back to a mindset shift that was really huge for me. Uh, there's two main things. There's the coalition, uh, which is our private coaching membership. And that really is for e-commerce entrepreneurs who are at around, who want to get to seven figures and above. And that's, it's a forum, it's a private coaching section in a, tr- in a live training uh, area. And it's super powerful. And we've been building that for the last two years. There's almost 200 members in it, also marketers and freelancers. That is a big part of our business. The other part of the business is called the Brand Guild, where I work one-on-one with um, some of the largest e-commerce businesses in the coalition are become Brand Guild members, and we have one-on-one calls. Uh, It's a mastermind as well, and I work with about 10 to 12 super fast growing businesses and specifically coaching business owners in that we have zoom calls twice a month. Those are the two main sources of the business. And then we've got our events and the events have been shut down during COVID, uh, continue to reschedule these things, which has been really frustrating, but at the same time, a great opportunity for us to focus on the rest of the business. Back to what I wanted to mention, which was a huge business breakthrough for me and something that I'll, I'll take with me forever moving forward was the difference between hunting and farming and the difference between subscription revenue and one-off purchases, right? And the idea that you can build a business, take this all the way back to my days at Human, when we were selling one-off franchises for $100,000, right? So every transaction was about $100,000 or more. Very big big transactions. So you can see how quickly you can get to a multi-million dollar business. The challenge with that was that every time you had those big transactions, you didn't have to fulfill them. And very quickly you get in a cash flow crisis because um, it was big swings of revenue. I had the same thing in my business with running events. And I think a lot of e-commerce businesses have this same struggle, which is you're only as good as your last month. If you don't have subscription revenue in your business, month in and month out, you need to continue to sell. It's why a lot of e-commerce founders go into software and they do really well because software is often consistent subscription revenue. But e-commerce founders are used to selling, 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 selling month, month, month over month, month over month. And that's a very stressful way of 
living your life and the stressful way of running a business because you never know you can be out of business in a month if you can't sell. And so the big mindset shift for me was moving from a hunting every month, sell as much as possible mindset to more of a farming mindset, which was let's acquire customers and then do everything we can to serve them well so that the next month they are excited about working with you. And it's a slower growth way of building a business, but it's way more consistent. And that's why a lot of my clients that I work with in the brand guild, one of the things we always focus on is trying to figure out how to get more subscription revenue in their business, how to build products that are consistent month over month over month so that you can take away some of that Facebook spend and redirect that to your existing customers. Awesome. I think that's a really good analogy. I want to ask you a few other questions because you have given us a really good summary of your journey over the last, I think we said eight years. Um, But I would love to just understand a little bit more. So you work with clients right now and you help them grow their businesses. You help them become more profitable and you do a really good job with that. But what I've been able to see and what I know you're working towards with some of your clients is to allow them to run a great business and also have more freedom in their life. Can you tell us why this is so important? Maybe some examples of clients you've helped do this with and how other people can do the same. hundred percent. This is my motivating force in, in my life right now. And I feel like um, my mission back to when I was burned out, the multiple times that I've been burned out in, in business. Uh, it's always been because I've pushed myself too hard and I haven't created enough freedom for myself in the business, for the business to run in a way that exists and grows without me. And because I've been on that, like I started my business because of the idea of freedom and to create more freedom in my life. But time and time again, I built a business that didn't allow for freedom in my life. And what I realized was that that I had kind of a breakthrough when I moved from the launching events model over and over again to creating a different business for myself that allowed me to spend time doing things that I really cared about and also supported my life in a way that allowed me to do things outside of work. It allowed me to have a rich social life, a rich relationship with you, and to be physically fit. And when I aligned all those things together, my business started growing much, much quicker. And I think the biggest challenge that entrepreneurs face is transitioning from the initial grind mode that you have to be in to get things moving, get the business moving, because it's really hard to not you know, grind for a while to get it moving, but you get addicted to that. And then you think that's the only way to grow your business. When really, as you transition and you grow and you get to the next level, you need to take care of yourself. You need to build a great business and at the same time, build a life for yourself that gives you the mental space to be able to make the decisions and be have you know clarity of mind that can take you to the next level. Because what gets you to that first inflection point isn't what's going to get you to the next second inflection point. And that has been what's been most fulfilling to me working with clients in the last couple of years. Many clients come to me that are growing like crazy, but have zero time. And they're stressed out. They're working 60, 70, 80 hour weeks. I have a client who came a year ago. They're working 80 hour weeks. Like no joke. Like they were literally waking up at six, putting their, closing their computer at 10 and things were going well financially, but towards a cliff in their health and, and personal life. And we made some serious changes, got some clarity around it. One year later, they're traveling the world living on a beach, working 40 hours a week, and their business has doubled. And that's because they're able to step back, look at the business for what it is, which is a business not directly tied to you, 
and create space by hiring, building a team and focusing on key marketing levers that actually move the business forward towards profitable growth versus just pouring more gas on the fire, which often leads to more stress, sometimes more revenue, but often less profit. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons that you are such a good coach is because you've been in all these people's shoes. You have been the burned out person. You've worked for other people. You have owned an agency. You've had rough relationships with business partners. You know, all of the spots and the blind spots of many of your clients. Very, very much so. I've been there. I've, I've fallen asleep in a Korean restaurant uh, when I was waiting for some friends because I was so for dinner. I was so tired. I was just so exhausted from the work I'd been putting in. I think that comes with the lumps of being an entrepreneur early on, um, depending on how you approach it. Right. And great learning experience, but it's not what's going to get you to the next inflection point. Okay. A few more here. And then we got to wrap this up. I would love to know what success looks like for you. It's a really good question. And a question that I, I always look at that and I say that it's, it's success is fluid in a sense. I go back to the idea of freedom is for me a driving force, but the, the idea of what freedom is has changed in my life over time. If you were to ask me a couple of years ago, it would be, you know, being able to travel the world and make money wherever I am uh, and have a lot of like freedom with you to be able to do anything that we want to do while having a successful business. And I think that that's a version of freedom that I still like and I still enjoy in small doses. What's more exciting to me now and what success looks like to me now is still a business that I run that allows me to pursue the things that I enjoy in my, in my career. So I enjoy coaching people, working with people. I enjoy creating podcasts like these. I enjoy writing and at the same time allows me to pursue things in my life outside (laughs) of my business. Um, meaning whether that's travel, spending time with friends, supporting family, being financially free, uh, and allows me to have the time in my life because I think One thing that we all forget is that no matter how much money you have, we all have the same amount of time. I heard somebody talking about this. If you right now could trade places with Warren Buffett, right, the most wealthy person in the entire world, but you had to be Warren Buffett's age and he could swap to be your age and where you're at currently, would you take that swap? I wouldn't. Absolutely not. Right? He's a few years away from, from passing along. And when you think of it like that, you can kind of recognize that what we have in our life is the ability to enjoy the time that we have on this earth and to do that in a way that we choose to do. So freedom to me means creating a life that inspires me, that allows me to be surrounded by people that inspire me, uh, healthy relationship, loving relationship with you, a tremendous relationship with my clients. Uh, My physical health is a huge, huge priority. I don't want to go backwards towards what I've been in the past, which has been, you know, have unhealthy periods in my life because of stress. That's not success to me. And I'm not willing to sacrifice my health for my business. Um, so been that, there, done that. I've been there. Yeah, I've been there. And it's not, it's not worth it to me. It's not worth it to me. I would rather have a little bit slower growth and have consistent health than faster growth and inconsistent health. So that, that's, that's what it looks like to me. But again, it's, it's fluid and something that I'm consistently working on and trying to define every single quarter. We look at what, you know, defining that. Um, and something I work with my clients on too, like, why are we doing this? Why are you doing this? What is it that, that motivates you? Because tapping into that's incredibly powerful and it can change and that's okay. I love defining our own success. While it can be fluid, it is so helpful to define it and to know what we're working towards, to know what our values are and how that plays into our success. 
feel like we could do an entire podcast episode on oh, yes. just this. But um, a few more things. What do you believe about business that other business owners or people in business don't believe? So one thing I, I truly believe is that it, you could, it's a create your own adventure uh, experience. There's no wrong or right way to build a business. It's if you own a business, you can build it the way that you want to build it to create a universe for the people that work with you that is beneficial for everybody and that you don't have to do it the way that somebody else is doing it or uh, you don't have to be pressured into growing faster because you see your competitors growing faster. Uh, you don't have to work 80 hour weeks because that's what you see in the collective media bubble around entrepreneurship. You can do it whatever way you'd like to do it. Again, the goal of your business in, in my mind is create freedom uh, and profits equal freedom in my mind. Right? I, I'm not a huge fan of taking on a lot of debt because it limits your ability to choose your own adventure. But that's something I, that I, I truly believe in. And I don't think that people take enough time to figure out what that adventure should look like for themselves. Part of the magic of life. Is there anything else that you would like to say to people who are on their entrepreneurial journey? I think that the thing that I like to share and think about, and the reason I wanted this episode from the beginning was that it is such a rich experience to be able to learn how you would like to grow a business uh, and how you'd like to live your life. And I think a lot of times people talk about that, like work-life balance. And I really struggle with that idea because it's not like you have your life and you have work. Work is a part of your life and it's something that you need to define for yourself how much of a part of your life or how, what type of a relationship you want to have with work within your life. That's something that I don't think enough people spend time defining. And it's, we're on this journey where you're creating a business and you're learning month in and month out about what works, what doesn't work, what you enjoy, what you don't enjoy. And that is so fun. And all the times that are tough, they often lead to the biggest breakthroughs. And they'll, if you can frame it in the right way, you will look back on those times incredibly fondly and they will be the catalyst for a new life that you can create and a better life that you can create. And so no matter where you're at, if you're feeling low, recognize that that is a feeling that means you might need to make some changes in your life. Don't run from that. Sit with that feeling and learn from it because feelings of discomfort in business will lead to your best growth opportunities. I think that is a perfect place to close this episode. Thank you for letting me be here today. This was really fun. Super fun for me as well. Thank you for doing the interview. Um, and yeah, uh, if you guys, I would love to hear from you on, you guys are on your own entrepreneurial journey. You can, well, the best way to get in touch with me is to go on Twitter and uh, hit me up at a underscore brawn and um, let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts about this episode. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you, Carly, for being here with me. Thank you. Hey, guys, it's Austin. And if you've been loving the podcast, you got to go check out brandgrowthexperts.com. That's where I work one-on-one -on -one with my clients to help them build faster growing, more profitable online stores. I've got coaching programs and workshops that we host all over the world. Would love to have you come check it out. If you're a fast growing e-commerce business or you want to be a fast growing e-commerce business, you got to check it out. That's the spot for you. We go more in depth than we do in the podcast with comprehensive trainings and coaching to help you scale up. Check it out. Brandgrowthexperts.com. See you there.